Hello and welcome to the Sisters for Fitness Wellness Show. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant. Our guest today is Dr. Jennifer Bryant, no relation. <laughs> she is an author and she's also the executive founder of Reaching Within, an empowerment journey, author of the book, Step Into Leadership Greatness. So today, Jennifer, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. And today I wanna talk about um, job readiness. There have been a lot of changes over the last two years because of COVID about how we work, how we think of work. Um, we have more choices with work now. We also, I, I was telling you before we went on air that things have happened that I just never even dreamed were possible. I, I am in radio other than this show and I was broadcasting from my basement for mm -hmm. six months. I didn't even know that that was possible. And even now I still do part of the job at home. So with that comes a lot of things. What have you seen over these last two years, some of the issues? So what I will say um, is that number one, it had to, uh, people had to do a mental reframing. Just how you just described it, in terms of now my home is now my office. What do I do about this? How do I go about setting boundaries between the number of hours I worked, because I've heard stories in, in terms of people not being able to shut it off. You know, there are 24 seven operations because they're in their house. Um, so that has been concerning. The other piece too is that folks lost their jobs. Yes. A lot of folks lost their jobs. Restaurants were closing down. Um, a lot of businesses were, local businesses were closing down. Mom and pop shops were closing down. And there was hardship to the economy. But at the same time, there were opportunities for you to really unleash your full potential in gifts and talents by going to the job market and seeing what's out there for you. And oh my goodness, let's talk about the opportunities whereby you can work from home, going back to that, you can work from home and you don't have to leave your home and you just work in front of your computer. So therefore there were opportunities where jobs, corporate jobs, they actually went 100% remote. So think about it. You don't have to worry about commuting. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, your clothing in terms of getting cleaning, um, your saving on gas. I mean, there were opportunities too. And I think during these two years, it took a, um, folks to really think through, number one, what are their priorities? Where do their priorities lie? And first and foremost, because May is, you know, Mental Health Month, is really checking in with themselves to make sure that they have self-care while they're working at home. Well, because a lot of times your work outfit becomes <laughs> stretch pants. <laughs> you made me pull these out today. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you start, and that's one of the major complaints that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. the fact that people are working harder yeah. at home. They're yeah. spending more time working, yep. doing their work at home, and it's not they're not spending a whole bunch of time with the self-care. Correct. How do you start that? How do you fit that into the schedule? Absolutely. So when they look at their calendar, when you look at your calendar every day, it should be deliberate. And I think what happens is in the beginning, we all got into this automatic palette. Let's just work, work, work. Let's get the assignment done because we're already at home. But it's important that you get intentional by designing your days. And what do I mean by that? Every day block off lunch, 12 to one, whatever your lunch time is. The ending of your work day, Hopefully it's in a separate area in your house. You talked about the basement. I have a separate area in my house. I leave it. I leave my work phone in there. I leave it. I get up and I walk away. Unless something is life threatening, somebody will call me on my personal phone. But other than that, no. 
The other piece too is um, figure out a time where you can actually set aside some time, whether it's a Friday, keep your meetings light, like your day for your calendar. For the last couple of decades, I had no meeting Fridays. If it's possible for you, try to make it as light as possible. Have some of your meetings as walking meetings. What does that mean? Oh, that means, hey team, this is what we're gonna do. Let's turn our videos off, not required. We're gonna take a walk and meet. So virtually we're on the phone and we're talking and we're exercising at the same time. That's an excellent idea. Absolutely, and you can even make it fun, come up with a challenge, right? Like how many steps? Come up with different teams, create different teams. But make it by, you know, really connect to the team. Not only are you trying to get healthier, but you're also connecting by saying, it's okay to come off screen. And we're gonna walk and we're gonna talk, even if it's virtually. Because that's one of the things that we miss working virtually is that socialization that that water cooler yes. conversation yes. that coffee machine yes. conversation yes and sometimes that's good sometimes that that's not but as humans we need we need that socialization we do regardless of your your communication style whether you're an extrovert or introvert you need it and so if it even means one-on-one -on -one, as they say in corporate world pull-ups meaning hey let's let's get on a zoom for 15 minutes and let's grab some coffee you grab your tea i grab my coffee and let's just catch up to see how you're doing because just because it's doing the work day doesn't necessarily mean that you constantly have to talk about work it's okay to genuinely connect because again you're at home you got the sandwich generation that's at home who's taking care of maybe their family members right their elderly parents as well as children and so it's incredibly important to take care of you and try to get some alone time even if it's meditation for 15 minutes and you go in the bathroom and you put on that calm um, app or whatever app, you know, I'm not promoting any particular one, but you know, go on YouTube and find something to meditate, even if it's for five minutes to kind of center yourself. How do you, because some people now, I have some friends who are going back once or twice a, a week. week. They're gonna, they're working at home yes. for the most part, but they have to get, go in once or twice a week. Do you find that you've lost something with those socialization skills because you're not going in every day? How do you gain that back? So here, here's something that's pretty tactical, um, but practical. So when you're going back into the office, let people know you're going into the office on this day and even put it on your calendar and share with people i would love if you can come in during the day you know if you can come in this day no pressure it'll be great to connect with you maybe we can grab lunch while you're there um or we can meet in person to kind of you know connect as thought partners to solve a problem but the key is is that you're communicating when you're going to be in the office and that's a way of communicating right and socializing the other piece too is that when you go physically in the office don't forget about the people who are at, at home so always set a zoom setting or whatever your connection um vice is to make sure you're being inclusive of those who are being who are at home too, so you can bring them into socialization. How about the people who want to, once they've gotten into this new situation, who want to stay there but the job is not allowing, they want the, the employees to come back, and so you start looking at different options. What are some of the first things you should do in trying to look at these uh, options? I have friends who said, okay, now I've decided since doing this, I don't know if this is for me. I wanna try something else. Where do you start? So the trying something else, is it job related or is it because they don't wanna come back to the office? Um, twice a week or they want to remain 100% remote? I think they want to change careers. Okay, they want to shift and change careers. There's nothing wrong with that because people 
uh, like I mentioned earlier, that people start tapping into their gifts and talents during these two years. And we're like, wow, I didn't know I was gifted in that, yes, right? Absolutely. I didn't know that I had passion like that. So it's always important. You can go on various job sites, if, I, if I'm permitted to mention those, um, but you certainly can go on Indeed. Um, you can simply go to Google and put in the title of the job in the local area and it will pop up. If it's a federal job, you can always go on USA um, Jobs, right? Dot com. And um, so many government agencies are hiring. And um, particularly right now, in a lot of places, are going 100% remote, which is good and it allows flexibility. But also, um, there, there are hybrid operations. But the key is, as an individual, you need to sit back and really think about what do I, number one, what do I enjoy doing? Have you what seen What gives me joy? A lot of people too are starting businesses. They sure are. That's what I was going to say during this these two years. People have gotten very creative. They have started their business. Like I have a day job in the, in the court. I'm a corporate exec, executive. But as you mentioned, I also have my own business as well that I operate and um and that and that there's nothing stopping you from starting your own business, connecting with the lo your local state and creating your LLC or S Corp or whatever it may be, but you can do it. You can set your own. How do you, you were starting to, to get into the self-care thing. Yes. Some of the things you can do. Yes. And that's a good idea to have a schedule. Yes, be Each intentional. Be intentional, put it on your calendar. I don't care if you have to um, actually set an alarm or some sort, but put it on your calendar and the next thing is to execute and do it. And you might want to chart your your accomplishments. With sometimes I have to remind myself because when I have my smart um, my smart watch on or whatever, it reminds me stand up. It also says breathe. I'm like, oh my god, am I not breathing? It's, <laughs> it says breathe. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> so 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 you can set little reminders um, around to keep you focused. Get an accountability partner. Say, for instance, if you said to me, you know, um, Jen, you know, Dr. Jen, did you did you walk your 30 minutes today or did you at least, you know, exercise three times a week? Sometimes we need that accountability partner. The other piece, too, is making sure it's t in terms of the self-care is doing the financial piece, too. Checking in on your finances. Seeing what where exactly you are. What exactly does that mean? That means checking in to see on your debt, how are you looking debt wise? Do you have a budget? How are your spending habits? Cause let me tell you, Amazon during this COVID time frame, they've been knocking on some people's doors and boxes <laughs> and being left on the front door and, and, and everything, but really checking in with yourself to make sure that you're not trying to pacify a gap or a loss you know, during this COVID, because a lot of us lost people, right? We lost oh, people, family I, members. I think about that and the loss, especially in the African-American community. Yes. Has been tremendous. People losing grandparents, parents, children, aunts, uncles, cousins. Everybody knows somebody. Exactly, and so that's why if nothing else, during this time, um, this pandemic, um, hopefully is giving people a moment to pause and to really think about where are your priorities and who is your priority. So making sure that you put that in your schedule in terms of the self-care is checking not only on um, family members with friends to schedule some time, even if it's for 15 minutes, hi, just calling to check on you. I know we have, we're in the world of texting, but it, it's, it's so nice to receive a phone call um, or to place a phone call to others just to sincerely check on them. You know, Michelle Obama mentioned um, a couple of months ago that everyone is suffering from a low level depression, not something that you can outwardly see in everyone, but everybody's got something going on inside as a result. This has been a tumultuous 
two years. Everybody's got something. How do you help your family and friends cope with that low level of depression? It, it's important to, you know, <clears throat> be okay with not being okay. And I have openly shared with family members some years ago, pre-COVID, that I, you know, went through a state of depression because of life circumstances. And I was grateful that my job had employee assistance program. And I think many employers have that. So as you were talking to your family and friends, maybe mentioning that, you know, like, you know, this didn't sit well with me and just admit where you are right now in the moment and then open that conversation to family, like, how are you genuinely, how are you doing? The one good thing that's come out of this COVID is that we are talking about mental health in a way that we have never talked about. Oh my before. God, yes. Oh my God, Stephanie, yes. And I'm and I'm happy about that because like I said, I, you know, was diagnosed clinically depressed because of severe anxieties mm -hmm. pre COVID, right? Pre COVID. And I know what like some of my triggers are. And I, and, and I have to sit with myself for a little bit and kind of talk myself through the narrative that may be going on in my head. But you made an amazing point about that, that more people are talking about. And it's okay to reach out to a therapist. It's okay to do that. That's a sign of strength. And that goes back to the self-care. When you have self-care, you also have self-awareness. The self-awareness piece will come. And it's not being selfish, right? Sometimes we confuse selfishness with self-care. Well, you know what? When you get on an airplane yes. and the, the stewardess is giving the instructions yes. about what to do in an emergency situation, she says you put that mask on first. Then you put it on your child. Or Absolutely. Whoever. So in other words, take care of yourself first. Absolutely. When you get in that car, what do you do automatically? You put that seatbelt on, right? Yep. So that's that's the that's what's incredibly incredibly important about self-care. When you wake up in the morning, whatever your routine is, mine is, hey, let me look and see what my verse is of the, for the day, right? Let me sit for a moment and think about what I'm grateful about. Right. Absolutely. Because that sets the tone for the day. And I'm like, OK, I'm investing in myself in this way. I would give myself the gift of time right now to talk through what am I grateful for? Like being able to talk with you today, whether you realize it or not, Stephanie, this interview is going to impact so many people. While we may not be in their living rooms, while they may not be sitting up here to having this coffee chat, um, we will be able to impact them. And this is a gift. This is a gift that we are giving people and we're giving to ourselves because we are reminding ourselves about the importance of taking care of ourselves and being very grateful for every moment. I don't care how minimal you think it is, whether it's that next meal or the gas that's in your car, because Lord knows I'm crazy. <laughs> that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> or the whole, you might want to stay home, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. But what you said about contacting uh, a, a friend or, a, or an elderly person yes, yes, and saying yes. three words. Yes. Are you, you okay? okay. And, Are you okay? And, and be okay with the silence for a little bit. See, sometimes we feel like we need to fill in every gap. But we got to be okay because sometimes we just need to show up in the ministry of presence where we are just quiet and we allow the person to talk and you're an active listener. And it's okay to say, I'm here to listen. And you know, uh, you brought up as well earlier, I'm a big fan of meditation. In the morning, my first thing, I have to sit and be still. I do. Before I put my feet on the floor, before I have my cup of coffee, yes. I just have to sit in that stillness. Sometimes something profound comes to me, other times nothing. <laughs> and that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> other times it's just nothing. 
and you do, and then I can go on with my day, but I need that moment or those moments of silence. And I think people should figure out what you need. My husband doesn't Correct. need that. He needs a cup of coffee. <laughs> So figure out what you need personally. Yes. And you said you need to find that verse. Yes. Personally. 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 And also something as simple as if during the day you're, you're, you're working from home or whatever. And during the day, if you need to take a break and just go in the bathroom and breathe. Remember I said my smart yes. words was breathe. I was like, oh my God, breathe. Yes. It's so simple. It's so simple, but but just simple controlled breathing can make a difference in the rest of your day. If you're if it wasn't a good morning and you need to go in the bathroom and breathe, you can have the afternoon. It can be a better afternoon. I don't believe anybody where the whole 24 hours is bad. I just <laughs> I don't either. You know I, I don't. A, a, I and and when you that find 24 those people, hours. look, when you find those people, run. You know, because <laughs> some people things are, are never right, no matter what. And you're like, whoa, is it that bad? And and here's another key point that I wanted to mention is that there's been so much happening in our environment too, um, and you and I both know that. And there have been points in time when I was not okay, like, you know, over this past weekend. And I've shared mm -hmm. with my leaders, right, during my day job, I'm not okay, and I need a moment to pause. And for them to say back to me, take the time that you need, went a long way. So I didn't feel that pressure of having to attend that next meeting or answer that next call. I could sit for a moment to really pause and say, okay, let me breathe, as you mentioned, and, and, and let me work through this so I can get back on track. And I wanna get to your book and, oh, and talking yes. about that and what, what you're trying to do with it. So, so tell us about that. Oh my goodness, so it's like all my life experiences. And so, it's called Step Into Leadership Greatness. Yes, Leaders Producing Leaders. And what this is about is, um, I took, uh, it was like 13 or 14 of uh, us, meaning authors, industry experts from all walks of life, including my daughter, so it's multi-generations, and we talked about various things. We talked about data-driven leadership. We talked about other styles of leadership. We also talked about diverse inclusion, belonging, colorism. We talked about strategic mm -hmm. me uh, mentorship. So it's a series of different topics, but the key is, is that there are levels and steps to leadership. And when people pick up that book, I want them to glean from it that they too can live their lives by default by um, design rather than default. And whatever was poured and invested in them, that they can invest in others to lead them. Because you know, manager manages tasks and leaders um, lead people. And so with everything that we do, because I have a mantra that people are at the beginning, middle and end of every process and decision. Once you invest in them, they will go above and beyond for the mission. So right now, it's important as uh, legacy builders and change agents, as leaders, that we are setting the way for other leaders to, to you know, lead from the back and allow them to shine. And so I've been on this mission to equip, empower, elevate, inspire, motivate, encourage, advocate for others to untap, to reach within, to untap their potential as a leader. What would you say, a, a lot of people are graduating now. Oh, a yes. lot of people are, are, you know, setting out on this new journey. What is your best piece of advice to young folks heading out there? Don't give up. Don't give up. You may get when I think about my daughter, while she got a lot of, lot of opportunities through this process of applying for scholarships and different internships and different colleges, there were some she never heard from. There were some scholarships she got denied. And what I continue to say to her and others, don't give up. The other piece too is watch your, 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 your network. 
Yes. Watch your absolutely. network. Really think through and be intentional about who you have in your network. Never feel pressure to do anything and it's okay to be you. I'm a huge believer, be you, authentically you, unashamed, unapologetic, and courageously. And be a trailblazer, right? Nobody has to tell you every single thing to do. You can create your own. You can be a visionary. The thing that I love about this generation and, and those who are graduating, they have a voice and they're using it. Oh my goodness, I wish we did. We were a different generation, but the world has opened itself where they can be creative and innovative and they can go out there and create and make a difference in so many people's lives. But I would say, don't give up. And I would totally agree. I would. T I, I remember getting out of school and I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any connections yes. or anything like that. And it just seemed like the impossible dream. But if you don't give up, it's gonna come. And I don't mean to get religious or whatever, but, but I just feel like if you take one step, God or the universe or whoever, whoever it is you believe in, in is going mm -hmm. to help you take the next step. Absolutely. Even if you're taking a step in the wrong direction, somebody's gonna pivot your foot the right way. Oh my goodness, yes, because going back to the community, um, when I was coming up, it was the community, the village, like the neighborhood. Like if I was going one way and a, and a neighbor saw it, it was like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And I always kept older people in my, in my tribe, in my village. And that's what I tell my children as well. And these graduates, I said, there is wisdom that's there. You may not understand it now, but later in life, you will understand it. And also know that you are interviewing every day. You're interviewing every day, whether you realize it or not, and opportunities will come. And how you present yourself. And how you present yourself. Every day every is day. very important. It's very important. So before we run out of time, I want to uh, uh, name your book one more time, Step Into Leadership Greatness. Yes, leaders. leaders producing leaders. And it's available everywhere. It's available point. everywhere. They, they can find it everywhere. Just, okay. Mm -hmm. And as in wrapping up our discussion, your last words to folks heading out there, trying to, to figure out what they want to do, whether they want to start their own business, whether you want to go into corporate America. Like you said, you're interviewing every day. Yes, you're interviewing every day and keeping in mind about your your gifts and your talents. Also think about the influence and the impact that you want to make and your big why. Sit with yourself, and it may take you a week, two weeks, or a month. Think of your big why and what impact that you want to have on others. And then go to those various search engines that are out there and look for various jobs and don't give up because sometimes it takes multiple times. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We've been talking to Dr. Jennifer Bryant, no relation, but she is a Sauron. <laughs> and yes. she's the, <laughs> exec <laughs> <that> in there. <laughs> executive founder of Reaching Within an Empowerment Journey. The book is Step Into Leadership Greatness. Thank you so much for Thank joining you for me. Thank you for having me. You've been watching the Sisters for Fitness Wellness Show. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant. Have a great day.